here delivering the speech at all is true. Though I must say, when I was named one of this year's valedictorians, I expected to be delivering the speech from a podium in front of several hundred people, not from my house in front of a video camera. But in life, many things do not go as planned. This past academic quarter is a prime example of that, and thus we must adapt. The ability to adapt is an important quality. While determination and tenacity are important and have served me well over the past four years, that which is rigid is often brittle, and prone to breaking rather than bending. Over the last four years, we have all had to adapt to the challenges of both school and life, and these experiences have changed us. We are not the same people who walked through Valley's doors as freshmen, and thank God, because those people would not be ready to go off to college in the fall. There were classes over the past four years that we may have disliked or found challenging, but we all had to adapt. For example, we all had to take Waitrovich's freshman religion class and struggle through the church history project. Later on, many of us struggled to stay awake during bronze classes when he turned off the lights, played music, and yet somehow expected us all to stay awake. In our personal lives, we have had to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of our social lives and friendships, navigating the rapids of teenage relationships and the turbulence of other aspects of our personal lives required us all to adapt and grow, hopefully into more mature young adults. For the most part, these conventional high school experiences required only small changes of us. However, these small changes have accumulated and thus we are different people than when we started high school. This year in particular forced us to adapt and presented us and the world with a situation that could not be solved by denial and pressing on. We suddenly had to acclimate to online learning, going from being in school every day one week to staring at screens all day and barely leaving our houses the next, going from seeing our friends and classmates every day to barely having any social at interaction at all. This situation demanded that we be flexible and adapt, and it was a rough transition for many of us, but it was also a learning experience and taught us the importance of adaptability. Personally, I learned this lesson the hard way three years ago when I was injured as a freshman in a club soccer game and diagnosed with my third concussion. When I returned to school after that injury, I was faced with the reality that ignoring the problems I was having and pressing on was no longer an option. I had to adapt, elsewise I couldn't function. I had to alter my study practices since staring at screens stymied my focus and exacerbated my headaches. To fill the many hours I had once filled with soccer, I poured myself into school and eventually took up art to feed my soul. Because I was able to adapt to my new circumstances, my grades did not fall following my injury, though I have not successfully managed to take up another sport since then. But more than simply adaptability, excellence also requires steadfastness and hard work. Over the years, my mom has recited a quote by Aristotle to me that has stuck with me. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. As Aristotle so accurately pointed out over 2,000 years ago, excellence is not a one-off feat, but rather the summation of all our actions and accomplishments. Thus, excellence not only requires adaptability, but hard work. The pursuit of excellence is inherently difficult. It requires drive and dedication. In adapting to and overcoming the challenges I personally have faced in my pursuit of academic excellence took a lot of hard work on my part. But I also must recognize that that was something I placed on my own shoulders. My parents never required nor demanded that I maintain straight A's. That was something that I chose to do. All they asked is that I did my best which ultimately is all any of us can ask of each other or ourselves. In the end, I believe we must all find a balance between flexibility and tenacity, between determination and adaptability, between standing firm and bending to the demands of our world. And this balance is where our strength ultimately lies. I feel I must end this speech by giving credit to the many shoulders I have leaned on on my academic journey. I would like to thank my incredible teachers who have not only educated me, but supported me through the challenges both, both academic and otherwise that I have faced. I feel I have learned something from each of you. 
For example, Mr. Johnson not only instructed me in the particulars of pre-calculus, but also taught us the dangers of experimenting with combustible materials. In Mr. Innes's class, I learned not only the proper use of commas, but also a seemingly random array of facts during numerous iterations of sophomore Jeopardy. In Mrs. Kemper's class, I learned how sarcasm and math often go hand in hand. I have learned much more in my time at Valley, but if I were to recount it all, we would be here all day. I would also like to thank my family, particularly my parents, who have pushed me to be the best that I could be and supported me throughout my whole life. Additionally, I feel I should give them some credit, since my identical twin and I being this year's valedictorians obviously tells us that my parents did something right, whether that was their parenting style or the genes they passed on to us. Lastly, I would like to thank Lizzie, my best friend and fiercest competitor, who has supported me and forced me to grow and better myself from the very beginning. <laughs>